three, two, one. And liftoff of Osiris Rex its seven-year mission to boldly go to the asteroid Bentley and back. Altitude is 14 miles, downrange distance is 9 miles, current velocity 2,488 miles per hour. OSIRIS-REx is a NASA mission to visit near-Earth asteroid Bennu, survey it in great detail, select a location on the surface to collect a sample, and return that material to Earth for scientific analysis to understand the earliest history of solar system formation and hopefully the origin of life on Earth. Range track shows vehicle progressing down the middle of the range. OSIRIS-REx launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on September 8, 2016. We arrived at our target asteroid near-Earth object Bennu in December of 2018. We spent the entirety of 2019 mapping that asteroid, selecting a location we dubbed Nightingale. And in October of 2020, we sent the spacecraft down to collect a sample from that area. In May of 2021, the spacecraft departed asteroid Bennu, and we're getting ready for sample return to Earth in September of 2023. Asteroid Bennu is a time capsule from the very earliest stages of solar system formation. The minerals and the chemicals that make up this asteroid literally formed before the Earth even existed as a planet. So we're really going back to the dawn of the solar system to understand how did the building blocks of planets come to be? And in particular, did asteroids like Bennu deliver critical elements to the Earth? Next major event will be SRB Jettison coming up momentarily. And, and you see the solid rocket booster jettison. Separation looks good. The surface basically acted like we hit a pool of water. There was no resistance whatsoever to the downward motion of the spacecraft. And that robotic arm plunged uh, 50 centimeters deep, about the length of my arm, into the subsurface of the asteroid. And then we fired the gas and the surface erupted in an explosion. We ended up excavating a crater eight meters or about 25 feet across. So orders of magnitude larger disturbance than we had predicted from our simulations and from our laboratory testing. So it was shocking, quite honestly. So one of the, the big challenges of bringing the sample back to Earth is just targeting that capsule to the right point in the Earth's atmosphere so it'll land in the desired landing zone in Utah. And that's the challenge that our navigation team and spacecraft operations team is working on right now. They have a series of maneuvers they're going to do on the spacecraft that lines up, lines up the spacecraft to fly by the Earth at just the right uh, position so that when it releases the capsule, it will hit the atmosphere at the right point. We're releasing the capsule 100,000 kilometers away from the Earth, about a third of the way to the moon, and it has to hit a, a, a corridor in the atmosphere that's just about three miles wide. So that's like kicking like a 120,000 yard foot, foot uh, field goal on a football field or something like that. It's, it's really amazing, but the, the navigators do such an amazing job at this all the time.
Bennu continued to challenge us, literally threw curveballs at us. There were particles flying off the asteroid when we arrived in the vicinity. We rallied, we brainstormed, we overcame all those challenges, and we implemented a perfect asteroid sampling maneuver. So really looking forward to the sample return, kind of the end of a long journey and the beginning of a new stage, getting back into the laboratory, back to my roots, investigate this material and unravel some of the deepest mysteries that, that humans consider.